Today I'm going to show you how to get a bibliography into Overleaf from Zotero. As you can see, I'm in Overleaf. Note that I am using a Linux computer, but this should work the same if you're on Windows or Mac. And you can see that I have my file open. Now, what I'm going to primarily be talking about are inline citations, which look like this. The command you use is slash cite, and then you have what's called the key to the reference. So typically this is the last name of the first author, the first word of the title, and then the year. However, right now there's not a bibliography file. So this right now won't work. I actually need to have a bibliography file. I go to Zotero. I've opened Zotero and I have a lot of things in this. You probably have a lot less, but hopefully you have one collection that you've put all of your papers in for this project. Right click, say export collection, make sure that BibTeX is selected, not BibLawTeX. Doesn't matter if you have notes or not, and then hit OK. This is going to save it. I actually have this already, so I'm going to overwrite, that's OK. And if you've added new things to Zotero, you do need to re-export and then re-upload to Overleaf. So I go back to Overleaf and I'm going to tell it to add a file from my computer, and I go to Downloads, and that's the file I want. And now you see that my file is located here. I need to make the name in my bibliography match. So now it says 361.bib, which is what this file is. So now I can go ahead and I can refresh my preview. Don't worry, this wouldn't have been showing initially. And note that you see these little numbers in brackets. Those are your inline citations. So note that each number refers to a, an entry in your reference, which is down here. Now one thing to note is that there are currently four references, because I've cited four things. If you remember in Zotero, there were actually five entries. So it's a little easier to see what's going on in Zotero, but you can also go and open up your bibliography entry and what each of one of these has is a first line which says at something. The something is typically going to be a book or an article and then that f the rest of that first line is the key. So Taylor Modern 2003 is the last name of an author, first word of the title, and then the year and that's our textbook. Now if you note, there is an article up here called Spinelli Optical 2012 that is currently not in my references. I have a Spinelli, but it's a different one. So if I want to cite this, I can again go back and look at it. I see that the key is Spinelli Optical 2012. So I come down and maybe I want to add a citation to it here. So the command is again, slash site, Spinelli, optical, 2012. So it isn't showing up right now because I didn't cite it, but now that I'm adding an inline citation, it should show up. I say refresh preview, and we should be able to see the citation here. But note that what actually happened is I have a question mark in brackets, and I got a warning, and it told me that it was undefined. The reason is, is because I spelled it wrong. There should be two L's. So right now it's not showing up in my references because I spelled it wrong so it couldn't find it. Anytime you have a question mark in brackets, that means you've referenced something incorrectly. You need to fix that. This is a very visible mistake. So I refresh my preview after I changed my spelling to fix it, which I did of course do that on purpose to show you what was wrong. And now there's a number one because that was the first entry I cited. I come down and it shows up there and now there's actually five citations. Now one thing that I'll mention is that depending on where you actually cite your, uh, get your Zotero citations from, there may be some problems with the formatting. So for instance, if we look up here at the Zafiratos, Dubson and Taylor, it actually says second, second edition, edition, edition. Uh, that doesn't seem right, now does it? In general, you shouldn't have to do much modification of your bibliography. It should just take care of everything for you. But if we come and actually look at this, 
under edition, it says second, second edition, edition. I saved this information from Amazon and Amazon didn't have it encoded very well. So all I need to do is edit my bib file to make this say second. We say that McIntyre also says one edition and since BibTech adds the word edition, I wanna make this first. Finally, if you look up here at this Augustinelli paper, it has a lot of authors. I don't actually want all of those showing up. So what you can actually do is delete all of them except the first and use the word others. So it's Augustinelli and others. That might seem pretty unfair, but what's going to happen is this really long list is going to become et al. So that's a nice way to shorten this and that information is still there. I can still find that paper and see who all those people are if I wanted. You can now see that this is cleaned up. It says first edition, and this now says second edition. If you have any questions on whether or not things are formatted correctly, uh, there are a few other problems in the bibliography right now. Uh, please feel free to ask me.